Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Earthly Headlines. Uh, today we're going to talk about the concept of panspermia and some of the theories surrounding how life got seeded on the Earth. So this new study came out that supports this growing mound of evidence that points to life arriving on Earth from interstellar asteroids and other objects. If you guys don't know what panspermia is, in a nutshell, it's the idea that the basic building blocks of life like amino acids, uh, sugars, stuff like that, uh, DNA, um, or the DNA rather, uh, came from an asteroid or some object and it hit the earth and that's how it quote, got seeded. They think the same thing happened with fungus too, that fungus, since it could survive in a vacuum, it came through the atmosphere from some other part of the, the galaxy and it hit us. Some of the main criticisms of, of this position are that uh, the b building, if, although fungus could survive in a vacuum, some some other part, some other biological parts, when you break them down, like I mentioned earlier, amino acids and stuff, they can't reliably uh, survive in, in an atmosphere like space. But more and more evidence has come out that kind of disproving that that attempt to poke a hole in the theory. There there are two main camps when they talk about the seeding of Earth. One of them is what I just described, the panspermia school of thought, and the other one is um, it happened in uh, in volcanoes and, and uh, underwater vents, heat vents, that provided the necessary conditions for life to grow, and from there uh, just uh, spread out. So those are the two main, uh, what you would call, theories. So this article is about the, the panspermia theory. So one of the main ingredients of life is sugar, because you know it provides energy it just uh, it, it does it's the required substance that gets things done in at the molecular level at the chemical level so um there's a there's a type of sugar called 2-deoxyribose that is a component in DNA so these researchers they sought to recreate the conditions of space when an asteroid is traveling through it and with the simulation, they wanted to see what they would find, basically, what, what would come out. So what they did was they put an, an aluminum substrate in a freezer, cooled it to near absolute zero, so not quite absolute zero, and then they placed it in a vacuum, in a vacuum chamber. From there, they started piping water in along with methanol gas mixture to further that simulation uh, because they found that in space before. So the last thing that they did to help cement their simulation was they shined UV light on everything. So the ice built up on the sample, then it was melted by the UV light, and then in the aftermath, they found a small bit of 2-deoxyribose, which is, again, a, a main component in DNA, the sugar component of DNA, along with some other sugars as well. So they started examining other carbonaceous meteorites that they already have, and um, they found evidence that alcohols and deoxy sugar acids were forming on these other uh, interstellar uh, or these uh, objects from space, such as asteroids. One disclaimer, though, about this is they, they still have a small sample size, but this gives them all the more reason to study pretty much everything, that, as much as they can anyway, so they have enough of a sample size to really build a stronger case. Some people don't believe the cosmic goop, the chemicals, to make the conditions uh, to you know living creatures. It seems like there are probably levels to life. So the further you go, the deeper you go in the evolution, theoretically, it gets more complex. So perhaps stuff like bacteria and germs and and all these other really small small units of bi bi we'll call them units of biological life formed out of these intergal whatever what do you want to call it? intergalactic interstellar or outer space wherever it is they came from they came from outside the earth's atmosphere and then it came through the fact that they're able to survive is for some people that's enough to prove that entire theory but i think the best thing to take from this is okay there's a building case and even if you're skeptical at least you understand that it's possible now they're 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 shining a light on that fact that it is indeed possible for stuff like sugar to survive in space and fungus 
yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all if panspermia was a real. They, they, I think it was that was talked about by the ancients as well. In some, I think it was maybe the Sumerian uh, translations. I'm not sure exactly. Maybe that's what they meant when we came from heaven, right? When people came from the sky, the sky gods and all that stuff. Maybe that's where that connection is. Who knows? Speaking of connections, I want to move on to this comment that I got a few days ago on the the hairless human video, how we lost our hair again. This video by far, by the way, has gotten the most comments on, on both BitChute and YouTube in, in recent memory. So that, that tells me that it was a pretty t- thought provoking topic. So uh, Bill, he says one possibility that comes to mind and he's talking about, well, he posed the question, why did the primates stop at bare faces and asses? Uh, because I talked about the three cones before, and then there was there are some primates who had the three cones and some who didn't, and the ones that did tended to have less hair. So he thinks the reason why that happened was some sort of signal of high intelligence. So quote, for example, dogs that stay outside all winter develop thick winter coats that they shed in the summer. Dogs that stay in heated homes with humans don't, and thus you see people putting coats on dogs when they take them for walks in the winter. Uh, so the way my theory goes is that if you were smart enough to make clothes for yourself and stayed warmer in the winter, that you would have less hair and maybe more attractive to a mate or some something like that, some sort of sexual uh, selection. And then he continues, I believe that us humans are not 100% the product of a pure evolution. I believe that our genes were manipulated and most likely several times. I can't say for sure by who or when or how many times, but it seems pretty likely that we are the product of genetic engineering. And I think... There were quotes in specifically the Bible that this made me think of, which was uh, when when Adam and Eve were cast out of Eden, they wore clothes. They were introduced to the concept of shame. And maybe shame was some poorly translated idea that basically is what Bill's alluding to, some sort of engineering. Because if his theory is true, then the more you cover up, the less you need your fur. So, but I don't know. Uh, Adam and Eve weren't, now that, now that I think about it more, Adam and Eve weren't depicted as like hairy though. Although maybe they were, maybe they were really hairy and then they started wearing clothes and then, or then the fur went off. I don't know if there's a Bible verse or some sort of ancient text that, that covers that. I'm not sure if you do know, let me, you know, quote it in in the comment, please. But I haven't, in my memory, I, I haven't heard that before. But still, a lot of people have taken this idea where uh, they look to, Bib- especially the Bible has been picked apart, where they they think that there might be a, a lot more going on than what than just what has been translated or what was written down. And even Socrates himself said that writing was like a limited form of communication. So yeah, maybe there's something they're on to something like that. For a good example of that is uh, Moses's burning bush, right? When the burning bush burned before him a lot of people think that oh what they're describing is a psychedelic experience even though it doesn't say expressly in the bible that moses was tripping his ass off it it, it doesn't say that when the burning bushes happened it just describes the scene again some people would take that a step further and they do that with a lot of the language in in ancient texts so maybe um maybe there's some language that points to genetic engineering in the remote past it i mean there is a missing link for a reason right we can't find that link between that direct link between us and and chimps so or or our our older uh, cousins uh like the great apes and stuff like that so who knows maybe maybe bills onto something but i thought it was a really good uh comment and you guys can comment on that as well in the comments under this video so um if you guys have anything anything to say about this study about panspermia about how life was started um, on Earth, how it got kicked off. We didn't even talk about the Cambrian explosion, but yeah, we, you, if you, what do you guys think about the Cambrian explosion? A bunch of life shows up in the fossil record out of nowhere. Maybe panspermia happened shortly before then. Who knows? Just let me know in the comments, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.